Well, the change is incorporated by the FAA, appears to move Boeing closer to getting the plane back into the air, at least here in the United States. Now, it involves revisions to the Flight Standardization Board report and talks about how last month it evaluated the modified MCAS system for training purposes. Remember, it's believed the failure of the MCAS that was involved in two crashes last fall in Indonesia and then again on March 10th in Ethiopia, which together resulted in three, 346 fatalities. The updates are approved by the Transport Aircraft Seattle branch based in Des Moines. The updates to the 737 training, including ground training in MCAS that describes the system for pilots, just what it does and how it can fail and how the pilots are alerted. The agency says it's still expecting Boeing to submit its final software package for certification within the coming weeks. Now in China, where airlines there own a total of 97 737 MAXs, regulators say they formed their own task force to review design changes there for the MAX. China is also the first country to ground the jet after that second accident in Ethiopia. China also is represented on a joint review panel along with the FAA looking to the 737 MAX more internationally. Meanwhile, we expect that Boeing's own flight testing of the systems and here aboard MAXs because we see them flying around in these text test flight hmm. contexts are going to go ahead and continue for a while. The final report has not been turned over. Okay, so at this point, are they mandating a, you know, training for pilots on a simulator? No, they are not. Okay. Um, however, some of the airlines, remember three airlines here in the U.S., American, mm -hmm. uh, Southwest, and United have them. Right now, American is going to do simulator training. So it's, it's a decision basically airline to airline. Right, right, All right, unless it's mandated by the FAA, and I don't think we've heard the last word on any of this. Okay. Yeah. okay. Glenn Farley, thank you.